Hello and welcome to another Vista Tips and Tricks video. Today's video is going to be an effects request video. This is kind of a mini series where I look at all the questions on the forum and Facebook asking how to build certain types of effects and hopefully I show you how to achieve them here. Today's effect is a flyout effect. So what I mean by that, it was asked how do I get my lights to start in a downstage position and then turn on and rise up over my audience and then turn off again and then repeat as an effect. So to achieve this, we're going to use a swing effect and we're going to be using reference presets as the steps. And I'm going to show you why this is a really nice and neat way of programming an effect. So first things first, we're going to create our presets. Now our presets are going to be our steps. So basically each part of the effect that we want, we're going to create a preset for. First thing I'm going to do is go into my presets quick picker, right click, add a new page and call it effects presets. Now, the reason I like to do this is because, uh, first of all, it's really good for organization. If I have all of my effects referencing presets and I put all of my presets in this page, I know if I need to update anything where everything is. And also um, I can reuse presets as well. So if I already have a few really nice um, position or intensity or color references that I want to put into my effects, they're already here ready for me to use. So the first thing we're going to do is create our steps. So for this, we're going to be using three presets and they're going to be a combined preset. So they're going to have intensity and position in them. And all they're going to do is follow the route that we want our lights to take. So first thing I'm going to do is give my light some intensity so we can see what we're doing. I'm also going to zoom them in a bit, um, but we're not going to be saving the zoom. We're only going to be saving uh, intensity and position. And the first thing we're going to do is create a kind of downstage preset. So I'm going to bring these forwards a bit and then I'm going to take my floor movers and kind of match them as well. So just bring them forwards a bit. When you're happy with your first position, grab your lights. I'm going to take the intensity to zero because I want to start with my lights off. So this is the first step of the effect. So this is what I'm going to put in my first preset. And it's very important that you actually give your lights a zero value. You actually need to enter in uh, a zero. Don't just program them with them off. And to check that you've actually got intensity in there, as you can see, we have 12 lights with an off value. So now what we're going to do is save this as a preset. I'm going to hold down my yellow modifier key or my control key, tap in my new effects presets page and call this one down off. I'm going to deselect beam because I don't necessarily want the zoom in there and I'm going to select intensity. So this preset is going to save intensity and position at the same time. So I'm going to hit OK. Now my next step I want my lights to turn on and rise up at the same time. And so this is where you decide at what height you want your lights to be at full. So I think if we have them come to full and I set them maybe just over the audience. So by the time they're here, they will be at full. And I'll match them with my floor lights as well. So maybe something like that. Obviously, all of these steps are completely up to you, whatever you want to achieve with your look. But this is the general way that you will be able to put them in. So once you've got that, same again. And I'm going to call this one audience on. Deselect beam and select intensity, same as before. Hit OK. And then my final step is going to be having my lights go all the way up and fly out over the audience and turn off again. So I'll set my height for that now. So grab my lights, take them out to about there. Grab my floor lights, do the same, try and match the angle. And then turn them off. Save this as a preset. Call this one up and off. Again, deselect beam and anything else you don't want 
and then keep position and intensity and hit OK. So now what we've done here is we've created our effect essentially, but broken it up into steps. Uh, this can be really useful if you're going for a, a particularly complicated effect because it allows you to then break it up into chunks that are more easily programmable and it takes a lot of the guesswork out of what you're trying to achieve. So now we're going to go to our effects engine, select new effect, make sure we've got swing effect selected and we're going to start with our intensity first. So we're going to hit OK. Now we've got three presets that we want to use, so I'm going to add another step by using this plus button down here. So now we have three steps and three presets, so all we have to do is click on a step and then tap the preset that we want. Then click on a step, tap the second preset, click on the third step, tap the third preset. Now this is just our intensity, but as you can see it starts off, turns on, then turns off again. Now to add our position values to this as well, we're going to go to our advanced tab. We're then going to click the plus button down here. Go to position. Add position in. Now this just needs to match our intensity. So all we need to do is just as before, add a third step. Click on our first step. Our first preset. Click on our second step. Use our second preset. And then click on our third step and use our third preset. And now, as you can see, we have a really nice flyout effect running across our fixtures. Another nice thing about this is that both attributes are using the same labeling for all of the steps. So you know exactly what's going on for each step of the effect. So like I said, if you have an effect with maybe like six or seven or eight steps and it's quite complicated, this is a really nice way of keeping track of what's going in where. And if something doesn't look right, it's easier to then go, oh, I need to change this step or that step. If I can now go to sequence, I can select my lights in any order that I want. And then perhaps go to blocking and type in four. Hit update selection. And now I have a nice flower effect in groups of four. Obviously, um, it's completely up to you how many steps you want to use, all of your blocking and your repeats, etc. But this is a really nice way of building effects and also keeping track of what's in them. So we can now save this to a queue. So I'm going to go to store part, make a new list, call it flyout, call the queue flyout, give it a time of zero. And I'm going to save my intensity, my position, and I'm going to save beam in this one as well because I want to keep them zoomed in. And then hit OK. Now if I clear live, I can grab that cue list, throw it on a fader, and play it. Now a really nice thing about using presets is say you've now used this effect in uh, a few cues. So maybe you're programming a song and every time you get to the chorus you use this flyout effect. So maybe you've got this being used four, five, six times in a song. And you decide, actually, I kind of want them to be fanned out while they're going up. Well, instead of having to go through each cue and update um, the position in your effect, all you have to do now, without even opening your cue list, is simply update your presets, and because they're referenced in the effect, it'll update the effect. So I'm going to release everything out of the desk now, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're going to use the highlight tool, because we don't necessarily need to um, save the intensity for any of this. I'm going to grab my lights. I'm going to put them in the down and off position first and I'm going to hit fan out and then I'm going to hold down control or my yellow modifier key I'm going to tap down and off and I'm going to just update the position so I'm going to deselect everything apart from the position because that's the only thing I want to update with this new fan out position then I'm going to hit OK then I'm going to do the same for my audience so I'm going to go straight out then use my fan out, so they fan out, 
update this preset. Again, deselect intensity or anything else you don't want and only update the stuff you do want to. So in this case, it's just position. Hit OK. And then I'm going to use my up and off. Make sure they're highlighted again and then use fan out. Update this one again, get rid of intensity, only use position and then hit OK. Now I've done this only in live. I haven't touched my cue list and I haven't touched that effect at all. So if I now clear and then play that cue again, you'll see that it has updated that cue from those three presets. So it, it saves so much time. Instead of having to go through all of your cues that are using this effect and redoing it one by one by one, simply update the presets that it's using and it'll update everything attached to it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's answered some questions. If anybody else has any other effects questions or any questions about this video, anything I can explain a little bit better, please let me know in a comment either on Facebook or on YouTube and I'll see you in the next video.